beautiful Gemini friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020 and I apologize gems this month there is no wheel happening over here but I'm going to make sure that you have the dates and don't worry the wheel will be back so that you can see all of the placements as we get into next month okay and Gemini the eat and greets are still going on we're bringing over beautiful people this month um, Matthew we met will be here Judith Hill will be here Simon Vorster fellow youtuber will be here the month is just loaded mecca woods will be here demetrius bagley so lots and lots of good people coming over great content and remember if you want to watch the eat and greets on replay completely ad free you can come over and join me on patreon i would look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets live but if you've got to watch back i would love for it to be an ad free experience for you okay all right gems so this month interesting mercury coming out of retrograde mars coming out of retrograde neptune coming out of retrograde and the last of the jupiter pluto conjunction and let's also forget not forget that we've got a lunar eclipse happening at the end of the month the fourth one of the year and it is in your sign so pretty big month things are moving i think we get to take a deep breath this month which is one thing i'm very excited about even though we've got some shifts and turns happening with that um jupiter pluto and with that lunar eclipse in your sign ultimately the energy is coming out of retrograde is like okay we can begin full scale to move forward the capricorn council jupiter saturn pluto all out of retrograde as well so truly things are going to begin this month to pick up speed to chugga chugga forward which is a beautiful beautiful thing okay so let's jump in here and talk about what's going on for you this month now right at the beginning of the month as we come in we've got mercury your ruling planet coming out of retrograde coming direct in the energy of libra now this lights up your fifth house space the fifth house is joy it's pleasure it's play it's where we take a risk right and we call it the house of true love but i i love that we also call it the house of risk because for me to put myself out there with you for me to you know play and engage with you this i take a risk i take a risk of of being my genuine joyful self as opposed to something that is just obligational so in the fifth house, this is also a place of conception. So yes, we could be conceiving people in this particular energy, especially as Mercury comes out of retrograde in Libra, a Venetian-based energy. But this could also be the conception of an idea that you had or a hobby or maybe a business thing or a project that you've been trying to get off the ground this will definitely speak to helping that move forward especially conceptually wise or if you've been trying to connect with other people in some way now this is going to be true for anything that has to do with children as well if there's been like a hold up and it's felt imbalanced with things around children Mercury coming out of retrograde will help that kick back into a little bit of balance. But I think the other thing that it does is it restores relationships around this area for you. Now, Mercury's already been in Libra. So what did you see when Mercury was visiting Libra before the retrograde happened in the first place? So you can kind of see that you get to go back to that, but now move that conversation and those ideas forward. On the 10th, Mercury is going to actually slide back out of Libra and continue to move forward now. Now we're getting some forward motion back into the energy of Scorpio. So this lights up your sixth house space. Now, one of the things that I love about this month is not only does Mercury move up there, so this is great for conversation around business, daily routines, your health, work projects, especially if you're a freelance person or you own your own business, this is great conversations. But the thing that I love the most about it is that Pluto, as the ruling planet of your sixth house in the general is also out of retrograde and getting ready to come together with Jupiter. So as this happens, this is genuinely that energy that as these push together, it's like new collaborations or new social collaborations are what actually pull your healing forward, but that's actually what pull your health and your business life forward as well. So this is an interesting energy with Mercury coming here. It will really light up the space of that conversation. The other thing I want to ask you is in a deep dive way, Scorpio, right at the depths of everything down there, in your sixth house area, work, health, daily routine, service to other people, even your mental health is up here. What have you observed? What did you observe from the time that Mercury went into Scorpio through the retrograde and now it's back? What did this make you a deep 
observer of, that you're ready to bring some transformation, especially in terms of your interpersonal relationships. I think that's a really deep question to answer at this time. If there is a place in your day-to-day -day life where you've been finding you have too much dependence or too much independence from people, places, and things in your life, you may need to look at where do you rebalance that connection. Now, on the 12th, we see Jupiter and Pluto coming together again for that conjunction. Now, we've seen it three different times. We saw it in April, and they were both retro out of retrograde. We saw it in June. They were both retrograde. And now we're going to see it again as we come to the end, to the middle of this month, my goodness, where Jupiter and Pluto are both out of retrograde again. Now, as these two are conjunct in this particular area, I got to ask you, like in this eighth house energy for you, that Capricorn place, what did you start? What did you start that was about your independence, a deep dive, scooping through your independence? Where did you deep dive into healing? healing from your trauma, healing from your own outdated beliefs. I really feel like more than anything, though, I continue to get this sense for you, Gemini, that there's been at this point in the year some kind of deep disconnection from a source of authority, but you're realigning with it in a way that's a lot more healthy. It's not codependent. It's interdependent. It gets to be that beautiful energy. But as Jupiter and Pluto come together, this is the Sonic the Hedgehog energy, right? Like they come together and they're like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and you really can succeed at something. There's a lot of success available here. You realize that you've got inner strength that you didn't really realize you had and that now you know you have it and you can stand on it. So between April, June, and now in this eighth house area, joint resources, joint finances, joint um, collaborations, healing, counseling, astrology, anything metaphysical, sex, reproduction, what did you start? You adjusted and now it's time for that thing to come to culmination. I absolutely love it because this is the position that lets you know you can do it, even if it felt really weird and twisty there in June. On the 14th, we see Mars direct in Aries. Mars is direct. I feel really good about that because I'm ready for motivation to be back online. I'm ready for just some energy of forward motion. I don't know about you, but this is going to light up your 11th house, Gemini. So friends, groupings, associations, your long range plans, goals, and designs for yourself. And during the Mars retrograde, one of the things you really got to look at in this area is what do you want to be known for? right? And what's your strategy for getting there? In the people that you have been aligned with in the last year, two years, you know, are you still desiring to be aligned with them? Are they, Do you have the same friends? Do you still feel called to be in that area? It's really like, as I see Mars coming direct for you here in Aries, which the Aries area of our chart has to be able to Aries. So Gemini, like, are you ready to show up as this confident warrior in the area of where your socials are at? including your social medias, your technology, where you want us to know you and see you shine, right? Are you prepared to step up in Aries, move forward with desire, with, with those chest held high and be this person that this retrograde was trying to get you assertively resetting your strategy to be in this area? So I have no doubt that any collaborations or any friendships or any grouping things that you've had, including the long range desires for yourself, you can start to move those things forward but remember Mars comes out of retrograde on the 14th needs a minute to wake up have his coffee get his life together which I'm sure his wake up is much more pronounced than Mercury's is I assure you but he still needs a minute to get it together and then as he resumes that orbit we can see our projects moving forward our ideas our friendships our conversations and things like that on the 15th, we see a new moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. So again, lighting up that sixth house place for you. Plant your seeds of intention here. This is a passionate energy. This is a passionate moon. When your desire for something is strong enough, you will move towards it. So what do you want in your day-to-day -day routines, in your health? in your wellness, in your independent projects? Do you want to call projects to you? Do you want to do that work? Do you want to be linked up with sources that maybe you can collaborate and have some depth to them? And then you're able to take that project to the next, to that next place. You know, are you in service of people to people in your life? And this moon is ushering that in and you're seeing in a very deep way that you've really got to find a way to be mentally healthy so that you're not so lost in the taking care of other people that you're missing out 
on the health and wellness and transformation of your own. So plant those seeds of intention. What do you want to begin at this moon? Because it's nothing but pure magic, okay? And then you watch it unfold for the next four weeks. Now on the 21st is a busy day. We've got Venus moving into the energy of Scorpio. So just a couple days after that moon, going to support this sixth house area. Venus likes to draw things in. Right? She's like, oh, come to me, projects. Come to me, health and wellness. So whatever it is, Venus is trying to call and pull it in and also to harmonize this particular area of your chart. So allow Venus to do that work over here in the sixth house. If you planted at um, that new moon, those seeds of intentions for a new project to come your way or help. I need help with this diet. I need help with this content. I need help just understanding whatever health things are going on in my body. I don't have to just surrender to them. I can participate participate with my body as a partner not a slave right like whatever it is Venus is going to come in and bring some harmony and also attract what you need in that area now also on the same day we've got the sun entering into the energy of Sagittarius and I feel like this is so telling of your month that sun in Sagittarius brings light heat life and vitality so now you're motivated there's movement here and it's in your seventh house so here as the sun is here you're like well hold on I want to connect higher outside of my horizon beyond my fingertips beyond what my eyes have been able to see and where you want to do that is in your conscious chosen relationships which is why i feel like this month speaks so much to being like if you want work success you want health success you want to feel like you're successful in your day-to-day -day life other people have really got to get involved and you've got to be seeing to their needs you've got to be saying how can i be of service to you you've got a completely heavy western or right side of the chart happening this month with the planets being over there and this is the time in the western energy we really consider our relationships a lot it's a heavy relationship time it doesn't last forever but the more social you can be and say how can i be of service to you will allow you to adjust in these relationships allow work to come to you allow some joy some peace to come to you as well so it's a really interesting kind of energy i think to work with this month but you've got nothing but support to move beyond your own horizon and say oh wait there's there's more out there maybe this is even the time where that reaching in that Sagittarian energy pushes you to question why you do what you do it pushes your spirituality it challenges your faith in a way that you grow in a really lovely way beautiful Sagittarian reach will get us to planes that we never saw coming okay on the 29th, Neptune comes out of retrograde in the energy of Pisces. So this is going to be tip top of the chart for you up there in the 10th house. Now, when Neptune goes into retrograde, you know, so when Neptune's out of retrograde, it's like we have this place between the worlds where we can we can we can create right it's like oh well what about this what if i vision this and then we're slowly able to kind of peel it down into a material reality when neptune goes retrograde it's like there's like like somebody put a lock on the in between the worlds right and the world is concrete so what we're left with these ideas and these visions that we were creating over here now they're solid and they're concrete and it's like hold on was that delusional of me or does that make sense? Can I actually do something with it? So the energy has been very concrete for a, a while now, for several months. So it's easier as Neptune comes out of retrograde now to go back and taking this material thing and going, I don't know, it's kind of rigid. I'm not really sure what to do with that and be able to walk again in between these worlds. It'll also help you um, distinguish between what is real, what is fake, right? What I can actually do something with and what I want to build ideas on in my career and what's not. I also want to say this too. I feel like for you, this retrograde time neptune up here in, in in pisces this year very specifically for you gemini has made you examine the the truth of how you want to be seen in the world right like what's the story what kind of storyteller are you what kind of healer are you what what's the story up here is this the victim story still happening and as neptune was in retrograde and things got very concrete i feel like some heavy reality set in and now you get the opportunity to say okay well hold on let's create a different story let's start to create a different future which you've got all that help with mars over here in the 11th house as well so i think it's a really lovely energy for you now i wouldn't be surprised either if spiritual work doesn't come your way
As we're closing out this month on the 30th, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in your sign. So right here in the energy of Gemini, sun's over there in Sagittarius, lunar eclipse happening over here in Gemini. So whenever there is a lunar eclipse, when Ever there's a lunar eclipse, we consider two things. One, we have to look at home because the moon is naturally the energy of home. So shifts to things at home, right? Shifts to how you're showing up in your family. Shifts to maybe how you are showing up in your physical home or where that physical home is. But the other thing that I consider with the lunar eclipse is that cancer rules your second house in the general. So this eclipse is telling me that there has been work done, but also a shift that is being called into your finances. So finances around family, finances around home, finances around your own independence. I will also remind you, Gemini, that you are the energy ruled by Mercury, one of them, but words and the things that you say, these have such a huge impact for you right now. And if you haven't been sharing your words, this might be a time where over the next six months, you're kind of kicked into gear to want to do that, to want to disseminate the information that you have. I will just remind you that, um, you know, thoughts become words, become things. So keep that in mind as you're putting your words out there. What are you speaking into the reality? You've got Pisces up there in that 10th house. Neptune is now out of retrograde. What are you speaking into your reality? Now, because this is also in the first house and the lunar eclipse says something needs to end, be acknowledged, or a big adjustment needs to be made over the next six months, this is you. You could even just go get a whole new style. You could do rebranding, new branding. We're just going to see you show up in a way that's like reinvented in a sense but we're also seeing you through the lens of how you're communicating so consider that as we get to this particular point in the month as to what do you what do you want what do you want to show up as next where are you willing to let this this lunar energy change your money change your value change your esteem even in how you show up with your family um, and relationship connections I think these are big questions to consider this month it's no uh it's not a small month because energies are ready to start moving forward so especially with that Mars out of retrograde are you prepared to be the person you you've been trying to become all year all right, Gemini, I think it's going to be a good month. I look forward to seeing what's happening for each and every one of you. So please let me know in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you on Patreon, in the Eat and Greets, and everywhere I can see you, okay? Bye.